Hey there, gang. Hey, everyone. Uh, I'm Todd Knock. Welcome to the Art of Todd Knock Show, episode 22. Now, it's been a while since I've last been able to do an art broadcast. So, uh, gosh, it's I think it was uh, December 31st of, of 2016 was the last broadcast I did. I have been crazy busy since then. Um, let's see, I was, I've been working on a uh, Spider-Man Homecoming Prelude two-issue miniseries. Issue one just came out. Uh, my Deadpool Too Soon series is wrapped up, so you can find all four issues of that. That should be coming out in trade paperback, I'd imagine, in the coming months. And uh, let's see, I did uh, Spider-Man Deadpool issue 12, the holiday special issue uh, in December. And um, I'm working, I did a story for Amazing Spider-Man 25, written by Christos Gage. It's Spider-Man vs. Clash. A uh, really fun uh, backup story to the mega-sized Amazing Spider-Man number 25, which comes out March 15, I think. So those are some of the projects that I've been doing or have done most recently that you can find in bookstores now. Thank you for all your support. Thanks for buying comics. Thank you for supporting artists, characters that you love, stories that you love. Thanks so much for doing that. So I appreciate everyone going out to pick up my comics. And so, gang, I'm so glad you're here. So as you saw by the, the title of this episode, Drawing Old Man Logan. Because Logan's coming out has come out in the movie theaters. I have not had a chance to see the movie. We'll say that at the top of the show. I have not had a chance to see the movie. I don't know when I will get a chance. Worst case, I'll have to wait till DVD or something. But Logan, Old Man Logan, I'm going to draw a kind of... I, I, I labeled him Old Man Logan just because I think people would probably understand who I'm drawing more than if I just said Logan. But all of us comic geeks would know who I'm talking about with Logan. So here is the pencil rough so far. So I went ahead and did this uh this afternoon to kind of get it started now if you're watching on youtube time lapse video of the pencils right here that you can see so here it is this is the breakdown stage i'm using uh 9 by 12 canson 140 pound cold press watercolor art board and it's kind of like a bristol board and i'm using a let's see a pentel twist erase mechanical pencil it's a point 5.5 HB lead. Uh, so um, this is me roughing out the shapes, uh, getting some foreshortening going with the fists and the claws coming forward, um, breaking down the, the basic body parts and then putting the clothing on top of uh, the body there so that things hopefully fit, toge fit together as accurately as possible. Let's see, and then uh, getting just tightening up the details bit by bit. Uh, it's all about getting the basic shapes down and feeling comfortable with those, then um, working into the the more more of the details. Uh, so it's definitely a process of putting that puzzle together. Sometimes I don't like the way a certain body part or aspect is is fitting or working, so I'll erase and try again two or three times if necessary. So in the pencil stage, this is where you have the freedom to make your mistakes. If things aren't working, erase and try it again. I'll rework an arm or a leg a few times, and you'll see the, the, the leg coming forward there, his right leg, the, the shin and the foot. I rework from different angles a few different times to see wh which, which spot works for me, wh which placement works for me for the, for the pose that I'm working on. Uh, I can adjust an arm if I feel it's too far out or too far long. I can uh, bring it in or extend it or whatever is needed to where it looks natural or as natural as possible for an exaggerated comic book illustration. Uh, so, so allow yourself that freedom to, to erase and rework things before you really commit to super tight pencils or inks or colors because then you've really pot committed there. Uh, so with this illustration, I saw that the movie references, the two, his, his shirt isn't buttoned always isn't necessarily buttoned in and tucked in, buttoned down and tucked in. So I, I went and I erased it and I reworked it so we see his t-shirt underneath uh, for this attack shot. So these are things to keep in mind when doing your pencils. So um, I'm going to wrap up the pencils and get back to the, the show itself. So what we're going to do is jump into the inks and then hopefully for the watercolors. So there's the, the, the penciled rough uh, stage and uh, what I'm going to do is ink with sepia tone Pigma Micron pens just to give it a kind of an older look quote end quote. So I've got the the 01, the, the 05 and I'll probably use the one broad uh, pen when needed so um, there's also the brush but I don't know if I'll be using the brush. I'll pull it out just in case. Who knows what might inspire me as we go here but I'm going to start off with the um, 
with the 0, 5 and be utilizing the 0, 1 for more of the smaller details. So let's see. We'll start here with the hair. Now as you can see, with a sepia tone, pull this up close to the camera, it's a little browner. It's a little more of a brown than a black. So it should be make it for a cool effect. And if there's time to go to color, I will be doing this possibly in, a, in watercolor or at the very least maybe a pencil sketch wash. Whatever I think might make for the coolest um, effect. Thanks for tuning in everyone. Welcome, welcome. Looks like we got people from all over the world. Someone asked where I'm broadcasting from. It's California, Southern California. Ever eat the other awesome Todd McFarlane? Yes, I have met Todd McFarlane. I have. I've been a fan of his art since I was in high school, so it was a real thrill and honor to get to meet him. He is some of my favorite comics, Spidey comics, as a teenager. When I was a teenager. He was not a teen when he was drawing those comics. Will I be returning to Emerald City Comic Con in the future? I hope. I hope to be at Emerald City Comic Con in the future. I'm sorry that I couldn't be there this weekend. It just didn't work out with uh, my schedule. So, um... But all my convention appearances and uh, are listed on toddknock.com and more to come. So, uh, if you want to know which cons I'll be at, swing by my site and stay tuned to my site. for updates, because there are a lot more updates to come. I've only posted up through early April, so there's a lot, lot more. A lot of, a lot more? There are a lot more, oh my gosh, I can't talk. There are a lot of other cities coming up. <laughs> that might be the best way to put it. So let's see, I'm gonna switch over here to the zero one. one have this on hand as well. I want to get the nose drawn in before I move into the mustache part. So my old man Logan here is a little bit of a hybrid between the movie version and the comic version. Um, I think Hugh Jackman is a fantastic Logan, and I certainly ha really have no complaints of his portrayal as Logan or Wolverine. Uh, but Wolverine has always been a very short guy in my in my mind. Uh, in the comics, he's five foot three, I think, at the tallest, and uh, Hugh Jackman is six foot. So uh, there's a bit of a height disparity between the comic and movie version. Definitely not a detractor or a complaint of mine, but uh, but I'm kind of gone for more of the shorter Logan proportions here. But I like the um, the hair beard combo that uh, that Hugh Jackman has for this movie. Thanks for the kind words. Someone asked, "How did I do the clothing with this figure?" Now, when I post uh, this to uh, YouTube, if the footage turns out correctly, um, you'll see how I, I how I broke down the figure, how I laid it out, and how I uh, sketched out the the pose, and then added the clothes on top. So you'll 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 see more of kind of how that came to be because I want to make sure the the body fits together as correctly as possible before adding the clothes on top. The 
let's see when when I when can I come back to the UK could I make it to Mid Midway Comic Con April 1st this year unfortunately no I'll be at WonderCon April 1st so I will not be back to the UK this spring but I'd love to come back to the UK so for those for whatever country or city you live in in the US or across the world let the conventions know who you want to see there as a guest Check with their information booth to see if they have a, a place for a request line or a, like a place where you can put in a request or what their procedure is for that. Some have questionnaires. Some con have, have questionnaires asking about your experience. And in that questionnaire, they often ask, who would you like to see as a guest? And then you can write in the name of the creator or creators you want to see there. So if you don't see me listed on your convention's website as one of their upcoming guests, then uh, feel free to let them know that you'd like to see me or whoever your other favorite artists and writers and colorists and inkers and whatnots are. It's hard to get a job as a whatnot. I think you have to know the cat in the hat or something like that. But uh, a lot of politics and being a whatnot. That's why I prefer to be an artist. Oh, that's a long question. In the difference between spotting blacks and cross-hatching to cast shadows, which do you think is the best of the two to render a, a drawing? <laughs> uh, for me, it's not one or the other. It all just depends on the effect that you're going for. And oftentimes, you one can utilize both. So, so it is not one is, is superior over the other. It all depends on what you're trying to convey visually. What you're trying to convey visually. So I hope that helps. Thanks for the question. Fun with drawing old man Logan is all the wrinkles on his face. The more lines we put in, the older and more grizzled he's going to look. Really putting some focus here on the eyes, so sorry I can't see y'all's questions. At the moment. How's my day going so far? It's been going good. It's going been going quite well, actually. Thank you so much for asking. How, how's your day going? Really want those lines up underneath his eyes to really make him look haggard. Not haggard. Not haggard. Don't confuse the two. I know we're just... Uh, Just a few lines away from old man Logan becoming a uh, Hagrid. I'd probably say also crazier hair. If this was longer and stringier, I'd, I think we'd be more in looking like Hagrid. But haggard, haggard is the adjective I am using. Let's get his teeth in here. On the tongue. A 
Thanks for the kind words, gang. Let's switch. Well, let's get his um, the pupils here. So very small here because he's like all crazy. All right, so now we're going to start working on the clothes for the moment. What was my first convention? Uh, let's see. The first one I attended as a as a youth, as um, someone trying to break into the comic book industry, age 18, went to my first convention, comic book convention in Dallas, Dallas, Texas, to show off my portfolio. It's called the Dallas Fantasy Fair back back in that time, um, way back in the olden days. Um, that convention no longer exists. There are new Dallas conventions. In fact, one of my art school buddies puts on one of those conventions. Um, so, uh, yeah, but but that was my first convention ever, comic book convention to ever go to as an 18-year-old. Um, my first convention as a professional comic book artist was San Diego Comic Con when I first broke into the industry working for Rob Liefeld in the early days of Image Comics. I was one of the artists he found in his, Rob found in his Extreme Studios talent search. Um, back when Jim Lee and Mark Silvestri and Todd Mc, or Rod, Rob Liefeld were doing talent searches for their studios to find young new artists. And I was fortunate, uh, fortunate enough to have been found by Rob, discovered and offered full-time employment and so the first, con actually, no, you know what? Actually, San Diego wasn't my first convention. It was WonderCon. WonderCon in Oakland was my first convention. Now that I think about it, I am mistaken as to what was my first convention was. It was uh, San Diego Comic Con was my second convention as a professional. WonderCon was my first one. Oh, thanks for reading issue one of Homecoming. Glad you liked it. What do you see issue two? It was a lot of fun to draw. You remember me meeting uh, meeting me at uh, the con in Michigan? Yeah, it's good to meet you there. Welcome, welcome to my broadcast. The uh, Motor City Comic Con is a lot of fun. Hope to get back there sometime. All right, so we're gonna jump here to the forearm so we can work our way back. So we got these, got his claws. In fact, I'm gonna use. My French curve to help draw these claws. So they have nice, smooth, curved lines. Drafting tools are a key part of any comic artist's arsenal. So if you don't have circle templates, T square, triangle, um, French curves, ellipse template, look into investing in those if you want to be a comic book artist because you will use these quite often. Get this other claw going. So 
So as I'm going over the, um, you see I can, I'm doing multiple strokes here as I uh, draw on the line. I want to put, a, put it thicker here and thinner there so it helps create depth. That's one of the key points of line weights is the depth that one can create. The thicker brings it closer, thinner makes it further away. So this will help convey that ideally. And then I'm putting the uh, bit of a shine or shadow on one side there. Thumb going here. really wrinkly knuckles here and hairy fingers One more claw on this hand to square away. Just make sure I get this finger drawn in first. I want to overlap. Claw, finger, claw, finger, claw. There we are. Other knuckle and Wolverine's pinky finger. Get some hair up in here. And now we can start working our way backwards, back up the arm. So from the hand, to the forearm, to the upper arm, to the shoulder, it's all connected. That's the secret. It's all connected, y'all. And then hairy forearm. So we got some pretty extreme foreshortening here going on. Pretty extreme. Put a little shadow on the inside of his jacket sleeve. Now the upper arm. Drawing wrinkles is a lot of fun. It can be a lot of fun. Study clothing. Like in catalogs and stuff. Study how those folds go. That's a good way to get better at drawing clothing.
Uh, thanks again for the kind words, gang. Appreciate that. Glad to know my broadcasts and videos are a source of help or inspiration. Thank you for sharing that. That means a lot. So I'm finishing the outside of his jacket. So he's got his shirt and then the jacket over that. And then the little t-shirt here underneath. See the shirt tail here coming down. Because when you get into a scrape, it's hard for that shirt tail to stay tucked in, in my experience, in drawing superheroes, drawing, getting into scrapes. Do I draw with the 0.7 non-photo blue pencil and then darken up with a 3 HB pencil? Um, I do, uh, oftentimes when I'm drawing like my comic book pages, I do break down the figure work and the backgrounds and everything with a 0.7 HB or 0.7 uh, non-photo blue mechanical pencil. And then I tighten up with a 0.3 uh, B, HB lead pencil. So not a 3B, that would be 2 to, um, wait, you did, did you say 3B or, for HB? I'm sorry, I got, I got a little confused. So much going on with the art, trying to catch as many questions as I can. Um, so yeah, so essentially the, I do uh, tighten up with a lead pencil. The one I prefer, didn't quite, quite recall which one you were inquiring about, but I do use a H, 0.3 HB lead pencil and a 0.5 HB lead pencil um, as well. Do I ever use nibs, like a croquill nib? Um, if that's what you're referring to, no, I, 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 I've experimented with it a little bit, but not so much to the point that I feel proficient at it, that that's the, the tool I want to use. I feel so comfortable with the, with the microns and other types of multiliners, like the Copic multiliners and such, that um, it's actually, I, I can get the work done better, faster that way than... Um, than using uh, a, a crow quill type nib. Not to say I'm opposed to learning the crow quill nib, it's just I haven't had time to really, really um, study and practice with that to master it. So let's get this leg going back here, put a little kind of little shading there to convey the leg going back and the his shin and foot are cutting up back that way so we don't see it. Finish off the jacket here. And the shirt, shirt tail peeking out right here. So with this arm coming back, his jacket and shirt are flailing out a little more. But here the jacket is coming this way because the arm coming forward. And then the back side of the shirt and jacket. Since the shirt's a little longer, it would fall behind the jacket. A little hatching there to help create that shadow. Let's see, let's uh, get his boot here. And then we'll finish that other arm.
So this is a commission? No, this isn't. This is a piece I chose to do in honor of the, uh, the premiere of the Logan movie this weekend. A movie I have not seen yet. And since many people probably who are watching the broadcast have not had a chance to see yet, this is a spoiler-free zone. So if you've had a chance to see the movie, please don't post spoilers. I said that at the top of the show, but some people probably came in late, so I just want to reiterate that. Just didn't want to have to block people who start posting spoilers. Strict rules here on the Art of Todd Knox show. Strict consequences. Yes, thank you for the hashtag, no spoilers. We don't want River Song coming in here scolding us. Uh, this probably will be watercolor if I'm able to take this to color. Possibly, depending on how I feel, maybe doing it as a, uh, a uh, pencil wash, but more than likely watercolor. I've already prepped the watercolors needed for this illustration. Let's put some chest hair on here. On his chest, specifically. Okay, so I didn't make that abundantly clear. All right, back to the French curve. Time to draw ink in the other claws, the other hands. Claws. Again, thicker lines here at the front of the claw. Going back to a thinner line to help create an illusion of depth. One claw, then knuckle, finger. Let's go ahead and do the hair now. Any chance of coming back to London? There are no plans at the at this exact moment, but um, but I'd love to come back to London. My wife and I had such a fun time there at the London Film and Comic Con last July, and then staying an extra week to sightsee. We didn't even get to see every place we wanted to see um, last time we were there, so we definitely have to come back. Another knuckle, and the third claw. I'd love to come to a Brazil con. I hear, is it CCXP? Is that the name of the con? I hear that one is enormous and fantastic and awesome. So I'd love to come out to Brazil someday. I got a lot of Brazilian friends in the industry. Uh, love to come out to see their home country uh, and, and participate in their con. So um, maybe someday, maybe this year, who knows? My 2017 convention schedule has not been finalized. So um, just trying to coordinate which conventions I can attend with everything else going on in life. So um, again, if you just tuned into the show, visit toddknock.com to see a posting of my convention, my current convention dates, and subscribe to the RSSS feed so you get updates, email notifications about new uh, convention um, 
appearances. And I've only posted p- appearances up through early April. So, uh, so there are still many more dates to come. All right. So let's uh, let's erase this here and see see how things are looking using the Statler Mars plastic eraser. How do I balance my sketches and pages? Uh, on a wing and a prayer, pretty much. <laughs> um, depends on how many pages I have to do. Hence, how often I get to broadcast. So, um, so like it's been two months since my last episode here on the Art of Todd Knock Facebook page. So, so the pages were really overwhelming. And then the covers I'd been working on. Don't know if y'all saw my Secret Empire number one variant cover, the Where's Hydra cover. If you haven't, look it up. That one was... That took a lot of time to draw. I lost track of how many Marvel superheroes and villains I, I was putting on that cover after number 66. So I don't even know how many characters I have on that cover at the moment. Put a little... Some belt notches on there. Cool. So let's see. Um... Let's try uh, dropping in some, some watercolor here. So I've pre-made many of the colors I'll need so that we can keep this moving along at a decent pace. So let's just start throwing in some, uh, some color. We'll start with a skin tone of sorts for, for Logan. Make, got my test board there. Knock out some of the paint off the brush there. It's coming out a little more vibrant than I want. I want this to be pretty muted. Pretty muted because the movie has that kind of muted look to it. So I don't want bright, vibrant colors here on Logan. Just hit all the flesh tones first. Thanks so much for reading my comics, gang. appreciate y'all picking up uh, first issue of Spider-Man Homecoming Prelude. If you missed the, the uh, comics I listed that I've been working on at the top of the show, don't forget to uh, add Amazing Spider-Man number 25 to your list. I did one of the bonus stories in there written by Christos Gage. Spider-Man vs. Clash. It's a lot of fun to draw. Oops, sorry, we had a gag there. I don't know what that was about. I think a call might have tried to come in. <laughs> so let's see. Next, let's uh, tackle the gray of his hair. What was the cover I did? Um, the one I was just talking about was Secret Empire number one. 
and that will be out, I believe, in May, possibly. It's called the we nick we nicknamed it the Where's Hydra variant, but it's a variant uh, for the Secret Empire launch party. So if your convent if your comic shop is doing the launch party, then they should have copies of that cover, that variant cover for sale. So you'll want to check with them to see if they're they're a part of the launch party event. So that and see if they'll have that cover available so you can snag one. So just using some some gray I made and then just laying down a light wash and then darkening where I want or need. Put little tick marks there up in the top of his hair to give it that textured look. Oh, I missed one part of his skin. His chest. Let's get that squared away. There we go. That's much better. All right, next up, let's take care of his shirt. In the movie, he had a, or at least what I've seen from the trailers, a uh, light blue shirt. Not quite a denim shirt though. It's not a denim. We're not doing denim on denim here. I'll have a different color for the denim to differentiate between the two, two claws. What kind of paper is this? Great question. This is, um, what is this? This is Canson, a piece of nine by 12 Canson, 140 pound, um, Recycled watercolor paper. So it is, uh, yeah, cold press. That's the other word, cold press. 140 pound cold press watercolor artboard paper. From Canson, C-A-N-S-O-N. So layering some of the blue on top of the other blue to kind of sculpt in a little depth. Hit some of those wrinkles in the in the shirt. Shadow under up underneath the cuff. How do I prevent the ink from smearing when I apply the wash? If you're using a Pigma Micron type marker or a Copic multi-liner, there's you're not gonna have that smearing. It's as you can see here, I'm painting what watercolor over this, this line work and there's no smearing going on whatsoever. So um, there are other types of pens. So if you're using a different type of pen or marker to ink with, it might not be the right type of marker. I, I don't know if uh, like a Sharpie would be ideal. That would probably make a mess, I would imagine. So let's see. Then let's hit the, that denim color I was telling y'all about. We'll go ahead and get his jeans squared away. So I had created a bit of a blue with some black in it to create my denim color. My intention is with these strokes here, 
creating this feathered look to try to give that kind of washed denim sort of look is the intention I'm going for. So just running right down the center of his thigh down to his knee from each side, pulling out the feather, feathered look, letting the, the dark paint pool in places, letting the lighter stuff stay there so that, let's flip it around, it gives a bit of a, hopefully a bit of a denim texture which is different than his light blue shirt. A little more shadow under this part here to help create that depth. A little more shadow there. Let's get the, uh, the thigh here, or not the thigh, the, the shin, the shin going backwards there. Let's tackle the other leg. Just doing that same technique again as I uh, approach the other thigh. A little darker, I want to go a little darker to help convey that depth of it going back. So the light's not hitting it as much because of the leg being back as opposed to the other leg being forward. It's being quite forward, in my opinion. Okay, so there we go. It's, Kind of looks funny. It kind of has a, a um, Miami Vice vibe with the jacket still being white there. Um, I could stop here and do Miami Vice Logan. And then I'll do Cyclops Tubbs and then we'll have uh, a new mashup. Miami X Vice. So let's see. Um, his t-shirt is a little white-ish. So I'm going to use some of the same gray I was using for his hair, but a little more watered, oh, about the same amount of watered. Actually, you know what? I want to pull in a little more blue into there so it doesn't look exactly like his beard. Let me just bring in just a little bit of yellow just so that it's not this, just so it warms up a little bit. There we go. Because we already have so much cool with the blue and that blue, we don't want more cool. That'd be just too much cool on cool on cool. And I don't think that would be cool. So I want to warm it up a little bit. A little darker than I want it to be. So I'll just dab out some of the paint so it lightens up a bit. get some water here, just some plain water, and kind of schmooze it around a little bit. Do a little dibble-dabble, and there we go. T-shirt, done. Now let's hit the, uh, the jacket. So I pre prepped a brown using burnt sienna and this ochre color. I'm hoping this will give a good movie shade of brown. So I want to just follow along with the lines of the wrinkles that I've created. Just those wrinkles that I drew in are now an, almost in a sense a guideline for me for how to sculpt in the shapes of color.
So just getting the base color of brown in. I'll come in with maybe a little bit of a darker shade. To darken up here. Now with watercolor, your, your, the paint you lay down will dry a little lighter. Almost 25% lighter, from what I understand. So whatever the color is, when it's wet, it'll be 25% lighter when it dries. Roughly. Your mileage may vary. Of course, that also depends on how much water or not water you have. in the paint that you're applying. Okay, so what I want to do is darken this shade of brown up. So this is the brown I was working with here. Dropped in too much of that blue, like way too much, like significantly too much. So I'm going to create a separate blue shade or uh, shadow brown. Get a little bit of that ochre back in here. Oops. Sorry. Using this over here. I'll save that for later. I can use that for other other things at another time. A little more water, a little more brown. More water. I'm just going to lightly come in here and add some shadows to this jacket. Just to kind of really texture it out, make it look old and and worn. So still even the brown that I first laid down in there, but uh, but just coming in and popping it with some, some of this new shadow brown I've created. Did I see the movie? No, not yet. Not yet. And if you just tuned in, and if you have seen Logan, again, for those that have just tuned in, spoiler free zone. Many people have not had a chance to go out to see the movie yet. So if you've seen it, please don't post the, poist, please don't post the spoilers. Uh, let's now add some brown to that belt. A little darker shade. Use some of that that two blue brown that I was saying I could use a little bit later. Use a little bit more of that with the brown I was using for the jacket to create a slightly different shade here for the belt. And we'll just carry this on down into his boots as well. All 
All right, and then a little kind of this, it's not quite fully pink, but it's kind of like this uh, purplish, reddish pink for his tongue there. Tilting the page so the color slides across. Let's dab that a little bit. And then let's see, let's uh, do a little blue. Actually. A little blue with the black to make his claw metal shade. So I left it white towards the front, then color towards the housing there. To help create a sense of depth as well as the lighting there. Pulling in some of the same claw shade into his shirt folds, the shadows. Okay, now let's see. Could use a, even light, more water on that uh, that claw shade for that kind of grayish, bluish black. And uh, I'm going to drop in a little teeny tiny hint of this in the in the teeth. Um, just now it's coming in pretty dark here, but uh, I'm going to dab some of that out. But I just want to create a little bit of shadow in there. I want to take that skin tone I'd created for for Logan and. Uh, Add a little bit of blue to it. So this was the skin tone I was working with. Add just a teeniest, tiniest hint of blue there to help create a shadow shade. I can then drop into the places I want to create some depth, especially up under his eyes. I really want to shadow out those eyes again to make them look more haggard underneath his chin there over his chest down the bridge of his nose through his brow there let's come on this side here underneath the cuff Along the fingers here where the claws are overlapping, that thumb underneath his fist. So it's creating a, a little bit of depth there. Just a little more shadow under on that t-shirt. Especially the further back we go there to create a little more depth as well. Now that the paint has kind of dried a little bit, I want to put in a little more dark in his hair so that he is um, so we're getting a little more a little more pop of the hair face area, eyebrows. I'm even going to pull that full-on shade of gray down in, in and around his eyes. Okay, now I'm thinking of throwing in just a little bit of a color wash in the background here. I want something... I think I'm going to go with something kind of warm. i got a, another effect that I want to do here at the very end, but before I get to that I want to drop in a bit of a color wa uh, wash. Just not sure what the best thing is to do. Maybe 
But what I first want to do is lay down some water here. We're going to do a wet, this is called wet on wet. So you put down the water first. And the paint should mostly stay right where the water is, ideally. So I saw someone say kind of a smoke or warm gray. Yeah, something kind of along those lines a little bit. So just getting my paints prepared. Sorry, so much of that is happening off camera. So I'm going to drop in a little bit of orange here first. Because I want that vibrancy of Berserker Rage. Yikers. Nice thing is that if, it, if you catch the watercolor when it's still wet, you can dab it off before it infects the whole piece. So. Let's do that. Let's get a little bit of yellow in here. I'm gonna let these colors kind of blend with each other. And kind of the uh, a warmish gray. It's almost more of like an olive green, but I kind of like it. Oops. Let's rescue Logan's face here. Put a little too much water over in this area, so it's really wanting to run. A little more yellow, dab in some orange here. All right, so now I'm gonna take the board and let it kind of run just by tilting the board. Let these colors run kind of down on this side a little bit more. Almost turn it upside down. Not even almost upside down, fully upside down. Let's turn it this way. Turn it back. Water got away from me there a little bit. Just dab it out. A little dab will do ya. Drop in a little more color over on these sides. A little tilt, tilt and blend. Just kind of dab this out a little bit. There we go. So what I want to do here is um, take some of the red, mix it with a little bit of the brown I'm doing right over here. So it's not quite full on red. I want to add some stains, some blood stains to his shirt. Onto the claws here a little bit. Let me uh, slide this up here. Just kind of let the brush dance across The page. So 
So, so we'll be gotten to a fight here. And so, you know, he's going to have some blood all up on him. On his claws. Maybe even up on his face a little bit. Don't want to overdo it. Just want to stain them up a little bit. Can dab out wherever I feel it's a little too vibrant. Definitely more here on his knees because he's probably kneeling over some bad guy or on someone. And now what I want to do, I'm going to try this as an experiment. I want, to, I want to flick some paint onto the board to where it gets this splatter effect. So let's see, I should be able to just, just do that. Just hit, fill up the brush with some red paint and then hit. And if I feel I got some paint, some splatters where I didn't want them, like right on his eyeball, let's go in here and dab it out. Actually makes his look eye look bloodshot, which is kind of cool. You know what? We're just going to let that be that. So there we go. There's the finished piece. I'll sign that and post it to my account on my social media so y'all can see. But I'm going to flip the camera around and uh, we can uh, take a few questions that I might have missed. Um, have I ever added alcohol to the watercolor to, for it to dry faster? I have not. I have not heard of that trick. I'll have to experiment with that sometime. Any Wild Guard updates? Wild Guard, for those of you that are new to my channel, is my creator-owned series. I did 12 issues at Image Comics. I uh, haven't done a new Wild Guard story in some time, but I hope to do more Wild Guard sometime in the future. But no, no new updates. Did I get the Mohawk Storm Funko Pop? No, I have not. I have not gotten that one yet, but I'd like to. Um, am I on the Skitchy app? No, I am not. Oh, you just know Kitty Pride in the background. Yes, the NYCC exclusive Kitty Pride. I couldn't even get her at NYCC. I had to wait till I came back home to California, went to a GameStop, and got one of the two they had left. So, yes, Kitty Pride is my favorite character, so I had to get her, her uh, Pop Funko. Will I be drawing the Power Rangers for the new movie? It's possible. It is very possible. I have to find out when the new movie comes out. Gang, I want to say thank you so much for hanging out with me. It's so good to get to broadcast again and to hang out and draw with y'all. So I uh, hope y'all had a good time. So thanks so much. Hope y'all have a great weekend, and I'll see y'all again real soon. All the best, everybody. Take care.